I am joined by Mr. Tony Khan. Thank you so much for being here, man. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the ring. Uh, thanks. Thanks I, for coming. I like to conduct all of my interviews in a wrestling ring so that at any point this could break out into a fight. This is a no DQ interview, and at any point I could power bomb you if you refuse to answer a question. That's no different than any other night out I've spent with you. So uh, just relax. <laughs> yeah, I'm very relaxed. No, I, I'm more relaxed than I've ever been with any other interviewer. You're one of my best friends and it means the world to me that you came and did this. Thank you so much for being here. Well, I'm very excited, but I just first out the gate, I have to throw this question at you. Um, as we know, you're involved with some of the most fiercely competitive sports in the world. And when you said you were looking for a new challenge, I was thinking, just pick something easy like invest in women's beach volleyball. <laughs> buy a women's beach volleyball team, buy all the best women's beach volleyball players, absolutely dominate that sport. Instead, you've decided to take on WWE. Are you mad? No, no, no. No. And I told you last year when I was first thinking of doing this that there's a great business case for this, and I laid it out. And, and it, you're the perfect person to make the case to because uh, you are somebody who grew up loving wrestling. You I love, love wrestling. And uh, you hadn't watched much wrestling for a little while. Occasionally you would go out and check in, but you would were what I would call a lapsed wrestling fan, effectively. And uh, when I talked to you about it, it was clear that there, you had a love of wrestling inside you that could be rekindled. And I believe there are millions and millions of people around the world, uh, particularly in the US, the UK, Canada, markets that we're focusing on right out of the gate, but also in other countries where the love of wrestling is spread, where people really, really cared about it. But deep down, they love wrestling, but they just aren't watching that much of it. And I believe if we create a competitive environment and put the best wrestling product out there and work really hard, I think we can rekindle a love of wrestling uh, internationally and and it'll be like it was 20 years ago where everybody was watching wrestling yeah. yeah and what can fans do you think expect from AEW what's gonna make it it, it stand out I mean we've got some of the best in-ring performers in the world but they're also great characters they're great performers both in the ring and out of the ring so uh, I, you know last year uh, I came together with a group of wrestlers uh, that that uh, all became suddenly available to work in January. And these guys uh, really, really performed at such a high level that they drew such interest in their show that any wrestling fan already knows this. But if you weren't a huge wrestling fan, like you might be really impressed to know that the, like Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks had never done a show on television as a group, as a wrestling promotion, yet they were able to draw over 11,000 people to a show they did in uh, suburban Chicago, uh, just on basically viral promotion and word of mouth and through the love of wrestling that they've spread. The kind of people that came to their show uh, were some of the most rabid, passionate fans you'll ever see. Yeah. And it was like a really, really exciting experience. I was there and it was one of the best shows I've ever been to. And uh, when they became available to work for somebody else, I was there uh, with a business case, with a business plan and an idea that we could uh, produce a show that was gonna be uh, available weekly and that we could recreate what was a better time to be a wrestling fan in many ways. Because right now, like we've got this going for us, what AEW's got, we've got like the best wrestlers in the world, yeah. the best like in-ring performers, but we don't have uh, until now a platform where anybody besides WWE, which has really, really great uh, distribution in a lot of places, uh, now we're getting distribution in places all over the world where we're getting you know, as good or better distribution uh, in many of the biggest markets. And I think uh, for, for wrestling fans, it's been a long time since that was a case where anybody else was competitive in that aspect. And uh, so when you say like taking on, I don't see it like that because uh, I just want more wrestling for everybody. I think that like the more wrestling people watch it better. And uh, I, I don't try and discourage people from watching wrestling. And we don't discourage people from wearing other wrestling company shirts to our shows for that matter. Uh, we're pretty open, inclusive group, which is like what makes it fun, and I think it's why people like coming to our shows. And um, you talked about foreign markets. There, obviously, the most important market with wrestling is the UK. Um, probably won't say that when I'm interviewing Cody, but um, I can say it now. <laughs> uh, fans in the UK are going to get wrestling again on on ITV yeah. as well, which yeah. has an amazing history of wrestling. How exciting is it to be on ITV? They were the first partner we could have chosen. Uh, people at ITV are phenomenal. Uh, when I first went to them with this idea, I didn't actually have anything yet. All I had was an idea, and it was 
uh, you know. What, you had no wrestlers? No, you know, I went to them and I had no wrestlers or I, you know, really didn't even officially have a name of a wrestling company. I had an idea. And they, and they bought it? They didn't buy it, but they liked what I was saying. And that makes me think I should try and sell more stuff to ITV. I hadn't sold anything to them yet, oh. but they were, but we had a concept that they wanted to keep talking about. And then when I did do all these things, they knew, um, hey, it's a man of his word. Like he, he said he was going to uh, create a new wrestling company. He said he would generate a lot of interest in the wrestling company. He said they were going to put together a roster of like the best performers in the world in short time and uh, build this buzz and that they would do this show in Las Vegas and that it would sell out. And I went and did all those things. And uh, then, you know, they were there and they held up uh, their end of the handshake, too. And uh, it's been a great partnership. And the people that work in ITV Sport are like phenomenal, phenomenal people. And what I, what I think is really cool is some of them are like really, really big wrestling fans. Yeah. And uh, it's always a pleasure. Like, uh, just like I enjoy talking to you about it and have enjoyed kind of getting you back into wrestling, I enjoy talking to them about it. It's really fun. I, 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 uh, it, it's not a chore for me. This is like when you say, am I mad to like get into the business? Well, I told you when I was getting into it, I really do love it. And yeah. just like with the, uh, all the businesses we're in, I'm very fortunate Like I get to work in things that I like, I want to do and choose to do. And I'm not doing this just because like it's a fun thing to do. We you know, invested millions upon millions of dollars into what we believe is going to be a huge, huge business. Do you have to, every now and again, just remind yourself, like, don't, like, because you are a fan, you're a genuine fan Absolutely. of wrestling as I am. When you're then involved in it as a business, are you constantly having to try and go, just don't turn yourself into a fan when you meet yeah. some of these people and you're, yeah. you know, you're involved in it at that level? And you can't, like, hire everybody in the world, and it's hard because there's, like, so many people that you are a fan of that are, like, great performers, but, yeah. like, we're running a business here, so, you, have, you know, and the people we have hired, I want to put every resource into. You don't want to have... Uh, you know, a roster full of people that you don't have any availability for. But what's great is we also have enough performers on the roster to give us some flexibility in terms of uh, scheduling. And what's great also is I'm not planning to do uh, really uh, the hardest road schedule in the history of wrestling by any yeah. means. And in fact, it's going to be, in my opinion, the most favorable uh, quality of life uh, plan anybody's ever put together for the roster of wrestlers. Because if you look at what we're offering in terms of salary, relative to the number of dates people are performing and the opportunity to gain full-time employment either here or elsewhere where you can work a full-time job yeah. there's, there's full-time jobs that people here in the studio are doing and they're full-time employees and then um, several and and there are people uh, that work in the production side that work on the talent side uh, that work on the creative side and that's full-time job outside of you know we're expecting them to wrestle a couple times a week it's not like you're going to be spending when we're up and running you know long after double or nothing uh, it, on uh, May 25th. Uh, Great plug. Thank you. Very, you just subtly wove it in. It wasn't that <laughs> subtle, was it? It wasn't that subtle. I was on uh, ITV box office and uh, in demand in the US. And